1969, we arrived in the Philippines. One of the first young men we met was 19 years old. We took him out of a hut. He and his family used to beg for food. And so he came to Manila. We put him in our Bible school, our very first Bible school. He excelled. And after Bible school, he came to our house. He lived with us for eight years. If I'm Paul, he's Timothy. I took him everywhere. Amen. He was an incredible guy. Developed into the most wonderful preacher. Became our national youth president. I took him on his first overseas trip. I gave him an allowance every week to sustain him. His teeth was rotten in his head, so I took him to the dentist. and They give him all new. I mean, now you get the picture. Amen. But he, somewhere along the line, he got tripped up and he went and became his own deal. Left our organization. Formed his own became something he really isn't but he started to lift himself up people almost worship him and uh, over a period of years 30 some years he went from a pauper a beggar to a multi-billionaire he has seven million followers that all pay tithes and offerings to him he's taken a lot of that money and he's placed it in different kinds of businesses and foundations until he is like a kingmaker in the philippines he's a mover and a shake he owns vast portions of land i can't just tell you airplanes and helicopters and you, you just name it one of the wealthiest people around a poll just came out that he is the wealthiest, number one wealthiest religious leader on the planet. I took him out of a hut. He's now poised to be the next president of the Philippines. There's this team working on the path to the president. He's the reason the present president president is the president. I took him out of a hut, turned his back on this apostolic truth. And the very day that I walked out of the doctor's office in Salem, Oregon, and he told me to have to take six months off at least, have to have these treatments, this was the day that this young man made a concerted effort to find me. Because come to find out that for seven years preceding he could not sleep at night because my face would come up toward before him and he was tormented i've got to go back and see my mentor i've got to go back to my roots i've got to go back i've got to, I, I i've got to see him i got to see mom and all this kind of resisted him before that because he'd made some effort before but no big deal i just wasn't going to do it but this was the day i walked out of that office and then i had people tell me you need to see him long story short he flies into salem oregon and his smallest executive jet the smallest executive jet $29 million plane. Comes off the plane. I meet him. I hadn't seen him in over 30 years. We embraced. He said, sir, I have come in the will of God. He asked where mom was. I said, well, she's at the house fixing dinner. He had an entourage there. Some people had come into Portland and got him a limousine and all that. But you, you got to understand. I mean, he's the lifestyle of rich and famous with this guy. He comes to our little humble, little double wide. I took him out of a hut. Now he's coming to my hut. Everything had come full circle. Wow. The scripture here says, you bring your tithes into the storehouse. You trust God with your offer. You be faithful to Him. Hallelujah. And He said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour out, pour it out a blessing that there's not even room enough to receive it. He comes to our house. We have dinner. We pray. We laugh. We reminisce. He has gifts for us there. I haven't told this to a lot of churches. Had a little box there with, I'm not going to tell you how much, but it was more than we needed to last for six months. He gave us other gifts. He said, I'm going back to the Philippines in a couple of weeks. He said, would you come visit me in Los Angeles. He has mansions and estates all over the world. He has this one in Los Angeles. They sent, he sent, several days later, he sent his plane up, picked us up in his executive jet. He wasn't in it. Hey Amen. He's got two pilots. One used to be the pilot for Al Gore, the vice president. Hey Amen. He's got that, he's got kind of a deal. Get into the limousine in Los Angeles. Merle Ewing is playing. He loves Merle Ewing. That's his connection. He kept, never lost that connection. We finally go to his house. Hey Amen. He ushers us into this mansion. Justin Bieber has a house across the street. The Kardashians have a house right down the street. Will Smith lives around the corner. That's the place that he has that mansion in. Ushers us into his house. We weren't there five minutes. He said, I want to, Mom, sir, I want to buy you a house like this house. I said, Paulo, I said, we don't need a house like this house. And I said, number two, we don't want a house like Well, he looked amazed. Everybody else got their hand out. Amen. So we had a banquet. Then it's my wife's birthday. They sang happy birthday to her a hundred different ways and then gave her a card and had money in that. Took me out to the garage. Brand new Bentley sitting in there. Beautiful Mercedes. I want to buy you a car. I said, oh man, you like Lincoln? I said, yeah, I like Lincoln. He's not going to buy you Lincoln. He's going to have everything on. Amen. I just, all of this was just so unbelievable. I think everybody here that would know us just a little bit know that we're not money grab. Our God's never been money. It's always been soul. It's always been the kingdom of God. Amen. And so God just takes care of us. There I am sitting with Paulo. Took him out of a hut. Now he's a multi-billionaire. Money means nothing to him. 